Hello, I'm back with a beautiful message that I received from the Lord. Uh, these past days, I was reviewing some notes that I had from the prior day, and I was reflecting on them, and while I was reviewing them, the Lord spoke to my heart. The Lord gave me confirmation also of what's going on among the Christian community. Um, and I want to share with information with all of you because I'm sure there's somebody out there that is not realizing what it, what can be the main factor that is putting putting him or putting her back from not only hearing the Lord but from walking with the Lord. Um, you might be wondering why the the title of this video is called Unbelief. Well. I have to tell you something that many people doesn't understand. I'm sure that the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word unbelief, you think about an unbeliever, a person who is from the wall, a person who is not even converted on Jesus, right? Um, you know, Jesus was known as a person in his own hometown. The people from his hometown know him as the man, as the son of, as the brother of. And it was so unfortunate that he couldn't do much for the people when he was there because he came to help all of us. Not only the people from 1990, 1970, 1980. No, from the moment that he came to earth, he came to help a lot of people. And, and I have to tell you that it's very unfortunate to find out that in the Christian community, there's a lot of unbelief. When I, what I mean by, by this is, Unbelief in the sense that these people know that God exists. These people know that there is a God. They know where, that God is in heaven, that God is in the universe, that God is every place. But the problem is that they don't believe completely in Him to work in their life, to do miracles. Let me go to the scripture to show you exactly what I'm talking about. If we go to the book of Matthew 13, 54 and 58, this is what's happening among the people, Christian community, that they have a, 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 a lack of belief. On um, verse 54 it says, when he had come to his own country. He taught them in their synagogues so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and those mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother's called Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And his sisters are they not all with us where then did this man get all these things so they were offended at him but jesus said to them a prophet is not with without honor except in his own country and in his own house now he did not do many mighty works there because of their own belief If we look at this clearly, my people, um, in his own house, in his own country, what does that mean? It means that our, his own country, his own hometown is the church, the Christian community. 
there are many people that like I was explaining earlier that they know God exists that they know God is omnipresent omnipotent but, but they don't completely and fully believe in him and they don't allow God to fully work and do miracles in their life um you know that unbelief start at the heart why because it's what why why these people were speaking like this what your heart has is what speak your mouth I'm coming from a perspective with the love of God for you to understand that when you use certain words and your attitude you're practicing automatically on belief you're not believing fully in what he's telling you what to do you're not believing fully in what a messenger is telling you about who is him about about the things that Jesus can do for you because Jesus did it for him or her unfortunately I have to admit and say this way and this is a reality and true that I cannot exempt anybody but an unbeliever can be a person who claim to be Christian not only the unbelievers from the world so let's put aside that because we're not talking about the worldly people right now we're talking about the actual Christians that are in churches the actual Christians that claim to be Christians I'm gonna put it in parentheses why because many of these Christians go to the church just to warm a seat to listen the message from a preacher from a bishop from whoever is giving the message from the pulpit these people have almost a perfect attendance or beyond going to church but still they're they're not actively helping sinners to know about God you see that's the difference that is the difference because when you allow God to do wonders miracles in your life and you believe completely and fully in him you will know who is God completely and you will know how to share with those who doesn't know God at all the goodness that God has done in your life. These people tend to demonize everything that happened in the spiritual realm when in reality not everything is about demon but God. We have to understand that even though the enemy has his demons working every second to attack us still God is working for us too and God has his angels has the, an army to cover you to protect you to fight for you for your battles but the more that you look for him and allow him to work in your life, the more he will fight for you. You might experience certain things in your life that you don't understand and they came out of nowhere. Well, I'm sure that was the Lord working in your life. But since you are practicing unbelief, that's pushing you back and holding you back and have fully control of your life instead of allowing God to have control of your life and do the work that he has to do in your life. You know, you may wonder how to have a pure heart to know God or how to know God. My friend, it's very simple. Just take time apart to be with the Lord. Only you and God. Just forget about any shores, 
any any errands that you have to run, anything about your children or your spouse, pre precisely take the first hours of your day to be with the Lord. What's the best thing? That's the best thing to do. If you're a person that you're not good at waking up early, well, still find a good time to be with the Lord. Just you and the Lord. Because the Lord wants to spend time with you. Read the Bible. Praise Him. Worship. You don't have to have a perfect voice to sing songs to the Lord. No. That's a lie from the devil. And if you heard people telling you that you don't have a voice, don't believe on those people. Believe in God because God wants to hear your voice. God wants to hear your voice by speaking to Him, by praising Him, and by singing. That's the reason the Lord gave us the, the mouth. Now, when it comes about hearing about Him, you have to keep your mouth shut and actively listen to what He has to tell you. When you do all of these things, you're allowing the Holy Spirit to work in your life. And the Holy Spirit will work in a mighty way. And then you will find that change is coming in effect in your life. Of course, all of these changes that the Holy Spirit is working in your life will be reflected in your lifestyle. In the way how you speak. In the way how you approach other people. But most important is in your faith. Um... Do you want to understand what I mean by this? Let's go to Titus. Titus 1, 15 and 16. And Titus, here is Paul speaking to the people. And in this part he said, To people who are pure, in other words, who are pure in heart, all things are pure. But to those who have twisted minds, and don't believe nothing is pure nothing their minds and their sense of what is right and wrong are twisted they claim to know God but their actions show they do not know him they are hated by God they refuse to obey him they are fit to do anything good they are not fit to do anything good. You see, um, it's, it's better to stop practicing unbelief. Because when you practice unbelief, practically, like I was telling you earlier, is the condition of your heart. What do you have in your heart? There's so much malice. I understand if you have been hurt before by people, people have done you so much wrong, you have gone through so much pain, give it to God. Give it to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to make changes in your heart. Because if you don't allow this ha these changes to happen, you know what, what's going to happen at the end? You will end up being in the fire of lake, which is called the lake of fire and brimstone. Um, that's because at the end of the day, since you don't look for God, you don't search in God's words, and you don't allow God to work in your in your life, in your heart. In other words, you don't know Him. God doesn't know you neither. And. Honestly, my people, God wants to know you more. But what's more important is for you to know more God. Don't allow what happened in the past or what has been happening not too long ago to you to affect you so much. But give it to God. Let Him to handle it. Let Him to manage whatever situation you've been through, you're going through. But in the meantime, look for Him. Read the Bible. Search Him. 
search him in the word and allow him to search in your heart to reveal you who is him to reveal you of the thing that he can do for you for your salvation not only your salvation to be saved but also your salvation not to be on the pit of fire because even if we are we're claiming to say we're Christian I have Lord I have Jesus in my heart that's not gonna be enough because we are supposed to be reading the Bible we're supposed to get in, into the world to look for Jesus to, to know more about God and allow him to work in our life I don't think that's the place that you want to end up and you know with the things that are going on around nowadays there's no difference between the people from the era that the time where Jesus was on earth to nowadays the only difference between those days and nowadays is the time and era but we're living the same situation it's the same thing you know um, it's unfortunate that history is repeating itself because of the same people that claim to say they're Christian but they're not allowing God to work in their life and because of your mindset also you might be wondering what's going on with my family my friends or whoever well it's just that it's just that since you don't allow God to work in your in your life you are reflecting uh, a, a different uh, lifestyle that you're supposed you're not supposed to be living and you're confusing even the unbelievers, the people from the world. And instead of helping and bringing those people into into the world, you can't. You won't be able to do it. If we look up into Revelations 21, 7 8, you will understand what I'm saying. He who overcomes will inherit all this. And I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic art, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. I'm sure my friend you don't want to end up there you don't want to be in that place you don't want to be in that position where you're going to be rejected by the same God by Jesus it's not worthy it's not worthy that you follow the path of the enemy just because um, for lack of understanding and for what happened in the past or what's going on to you right now you might say that you you say like that like it's easy i know it's not easy i've been through a lot i've been through a lot believe me i've been through a lot and i am going through some stuff right now but I'm not allowing all those things to stop me from doing what of what I'm supposed to do. I'm not allowing those things to stop me from looking for God in the in the Word, from praying, from praising Him, and for allowing God to work in my life and make the changes that I need to have. So, my friend, I just want to tell you that instead of reciting. In what happened just move on let go and allow God to work in your life put in practice your faith start believing in him let God to work behind scenes allow him to make changes in your life in the meantime I advise you to do what you need to do praise him 
Read the Bible. Don't stop praising Him throughout the day because that's all He wants from us. Thank you for watching.